Welcome to the latest webcast in Caring.com's Digital Marketing Academy. Our session today is focused on helping your agency craft excellent sales scripting to convert more prospects into clients. I'm Denise Grob, a marketing director here at Caring.com, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Peter Drube, who I'll introduce in more depth in just one moment. Let's go ahead and get this started. Here we go. Before we dive into the uh, presentation, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. This is a one-way webcast where only the presenters speak. You can ask questions, though. We do want you to ask as many questions as you can, and um, that would be right there in your module. Uh, and if we don't get to your question during the session, we will follow up afterward. We're going to have a Q&A after Peter does his main presentation. And uh, the number one question we typically get is, are we recording the session? The answer is yes. You may see the recording symbol up in the upper left of your screen. Uh, and we will make the slides available after the session as well. Now, this is a free webinar, but the price of admission is a brief commercial about Caring.com, the host of this session. Our organization was founded by caregivers for caregivers. Our flagship website, Caring.com, was created and launched in 2007 to equip family caregivers to make better decisions, save time and money, and feel less alone and less stressed in providing senior care to their loved ones. Today, millions of people come to our website to research and get referred to senior living communities and home care agencies. In fact, we have one of the most comprehensive senior care directories on the web, and we are number one for senior care reviews online, with about 250,000 consumer reviews posted today and thousands added monthly. In May 2018, we were acquired by Caring Holdings LLC, which is a group of investors with over 15 years of digital marketing expertise. This transaction has enabled us to continue and expand our services to family caregivers and older adults and enhance our competitive position in the marketplace. Our featured presenter today is someone that we are thrilled to have on the Caring team, Peter Drupe. Some of you are very likely familiar with him, given his extensive experience in the home care industry, including helping to build both the Seniors Choice and Hallmark Home Care, two organizations through which he trained hundreds of home care franchises nationwide. Peter is a renowned trainer in sales and marketing with a proven track record in multiple industries. He has a wealth of practical knowledge for home care agencies, and besides being a phenomenal professional, he's also an all-around great guy with some wonderful real-life stories that leave you with both a smile and nuggets of valuable truth. Here's a high-level overview of what Peter will be sharing with you today. Um, he's going to start with the importance of call scripts, then he's going to take you through the telephone principles uh, and call components and scripting, how to handle brush-offs and objections, and then we will get into the Q&A. Now, without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Peter. Just bear with me while I give the remote control to him. All right, Peter, you are now in charge. Why, thank you, Denise. It is a pleasure to work with Denise as well. And uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, people go through my bio, I feel like it's more of a eulogy. <laughs> you know, I'm a little self-conscious about it sometimes, but I do have a lot of experience in the industry and I'm excited about today's topic because this is a, a real passion of mine. I've, uh, I have made thousands of these calls myself, uh, always based on a script, always trying to hone the script to make it more effective. I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of uh, agencies throughout the country, coaching, working with them on making sure that their scripts are, are doing what they need to do and, and making sure that uh, we have the right adherence to scripts. So I'm really excited about today's topic. It's, um, it's something that, like I said, I, I, is near and dear to my heart and I'm looking forward to it. Something with it that I have a lot of experience doing over the last 25 years that, uh, that I've been in this industry. And so I'm excited to share with you and excited to, to get to it. So let's start. Um, again, what we're a, a quick preface. There's a lot of scripts in your business that you should have. And today, obviously, I'm not going to get to every one of those scripts. Today is focused on one type of script primarily, and that is your initial script calling on internet-based leads. Again, if you've joined us for other webinars, if you haven't, go back and look at our library. They're they're available. 
uh, in our library, and you can go back and watch previous ones. But you know that uh, we've talked a lot about how there is a difference between the kind of marketing that you do to create professional referrals in the community and the leads you get from those, and then all of your other advertising, primarily online these days. Uh, they're different in the, in the type of lead that comes in, and you need a different approach to each. One of the challenges that I find as I go out and uh, consult with agencies and talk with them is that often, they, A, they don't see the difference. They, they try and treat all leads the same. They're not the same. They have different uh, needs and wants and desires, and we'll talk about that today. But then also, they don't have a script for handling these leads that come off the internet, either off their own website or they purchase leads from us. Uh, they're part of our enhanced listing program, and so they get uh, screen leads that we send them. Or they get leads from anywhere else on the internet or any, any other advertising leads for that matter. And they don't have a script that's specifically designed to detail or to go after those. Um, the opening script, the opening call when you're first reaching them. And so we're going to talk about that today. That's the primary focus. Now, a lot of the principles we talk about, you can apply to every other script in your business. And uh, I'll give you a lot of tips and things uh, as we go through that, that will help with that. But today is about that. And by the end of this, you'll have a script for that opening call. Uh, in fact, we'll share one with, uh, you know, with the webinar recording and stuff. I'll, I'll give Denise a, a printed out script that we can post as well along with it. And we'll go through that. So let's talk, talk first about uh, the importance of scripting. And I'm preaching to the choir a bit here because you all, you all joined a webinar on scripting. So you, you obviously know the importance of it. Uh, the people that I really need to talk to the, about the importance of this are people not here today. Right? So I'll, I'll go quickly through this, but it is important to say a couple of things about this. And that is that, um, let me see if I can get this to advance here. Um, uh, there we go, let's see if the controls, nope. Oh, there we go, okay, got it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about the importance of this. So first of all, why you must have a script. I'll go through these quickly, but here's the bottom line. Uh, it'll, it'll dramatically increase, increase your conversion rates. That's the most important reason. Uh, time and time again, when I go into agencies, they don't have a script, they're winging it. Uh, people are saying whatever they can say, they think they're doing a good job. Some people are doing better than others. And uh, as soon as we institute a script that every person uses, every call that comes in off an internet lead gets the same process, we see conversion leads jump. And it's not person-based, it's what they say based. Right? So the bottom line is that you will dramatically increase the, the conversion rates with a better script. A uh, quick uh, anecdotal story. Again, it, you know, it's not a general statement, but I was talking to one of our clients, oh, I don't know, this is about two months ago, and he was complaining that, oh, you know, that I don't know if the leads are any good because you know, we're just not converting them. He had one person that was, uh, that was handling all the calls. She had been in his business for quite some time. I asked, well, does he have a script? And he said, well, no, I just leave it to her. She knows what she's doing. And we're not converting in any of them. It must, be, it, it must be because of the leads. And I said, well, you know, unfortunately, competitors, even right in your market, are converting, you know, 20, 30, 40% of them. So I don't know if it's the leads. Um, and, you know, we kind of discussed it. I sent him some details on a script. Well, coincidentally, he, he, he called me back about three weeks later. He said, coincidentally, she went on vacation. And then she was out ill for a couple of days. Uh, and during that time, he had somebody else taking calls or making these calls to these leads. And he said, lo and behold, we started converting them left and right. And uh, he said, well, I'm just going to have that person do it from now on. And I said, well, that might help. It might be the person, but it's also the script. I said, I said how did you get that person going? He said, well, I, I gave him the script that you sent. And I told, her, I told her that she had to do it with that script. And I said, well, okay. So, um, use the script, you know, even train the, the, the former person on doing it. Uh, it does make a difference in your conversion rates. Now, part of the reason is that you drive conversations. When, what I find is when we don't have scripts, uh, there's, a, there's a welcome, people do the best they can with, you know, hi, how you doing type of thing. But then it turns into them, meaning the consumer driving the conversation, turns into us answering questions for them. And it's not a terrible thing, but at the same time, that's not us leading them through a process. Um, we don't wanna have a situation where, where we're, all we're doing is being reactive and answering questions. A script helps you to, to control the conversation, to lead it where you wanna go. And frankly, that's what people want. People are dying to be led. The consumers are dying to be led someplace. And you know this, 
Because when you call a place that obviously has no scripts, right? You call and they say, uh, hi, what's up, right? You know right away there's not a script in the business. And, um, and when all they do is answer a few questions and you're not even sure what to ask, uh, it doesn't it feel a little bit weird? You, you want somebody to lead you through the process. You want, you want somebody to be able to tell you what to do and how to do it. And that's what a script does is it drives the conversation. By the way, the same is true for your employees. We'll talk about that here in a moment. That is that your employees want to be led. They want to be led through this process. They want to be able to, to know what to do. So to that point, there we go. Um, doing so, scripts also improve your image and your brand. Uh, your business comes across as being a serious player in the industry when you have scripts for everything you do. Uh, it just, and you know that from calling businesses, it just is a different level of professionalism where everybody answers the phone the same way. Every call that's made of a certain type is made on certain uh, formats and, and with certain outcomes. It just makes all the difference in the world. And then the biggest thing about this is that it actually helps your people. Now, here's the interesting thing is that I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of agencies that I have instituted scripts with and worked on this with. And I will, I will promise you one thing. As you start instituting scripts in your agency for everything, you will have nothing but complaints at first from your people. I don't know what it is, but any type of control of employees creates complaints initially. But that's not the reason not to do it. Right? It's just like, I mean, I, I, I don't know if the analogy is a good one, but your kids will always complain about going to school. But that doesn't mean you don't send them to school, right? You have to send them to school despite the complaints. The same thing here. When you institute scripts, there will be complaints, but you need to stick with it as the business owner or manager because it sets a tone of seriousness in your business. It says to everybody, the leads that we are calling on are that important. The calls that we make are that important. And this business is that important. We don't just wing it here. We do it in a specific format in a specific way. By also by doing it, it gives confidence and pride to all of your staff. I've had people that complained mightily about uh, having scripts and then you know, later, you know, a couple of years later, as they left the business, formed their own, or went on to different businesses, I've had them call me up and say, hey, can I get those scripts again? They want the scripts in their new businesses because it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, the analogy that I've always used uh, with people is that it's kind of like if, if I took employees out to an airfield and said, hey, you know what, the, the job for you today is, is you're going to be flying my airplanes for me. I know you don't know anything about it yet, but Here's a plane, hop in, uh, wing it, see if you can uh, figure it out. And uh, when we get up in the air, I'll, I'll show you some more about it. <laughs> so it's a, it, it's a crazy analogy, but here's what you'll get. You'll get tremendous reluctance to even get the darn plane, right? Because people are scared to death that they might actually get the thing off the ground, right? So it's the same thing with calls. Call reluctance in part comes from a fear of not knowing what to do <clears throat> or not knowing what to say. You end call reluctance to a large degree when you have good scripts, scripts that produce results and scripts that people know are what they need to be doing. It just changes the whole attitude and focus of your business. So let's get into some principles that uh, go along with scripts. And again, I'm going to run through these quickly. Some of them you know, some of them are good sales principles. They're keys to great calls. And the reason I'm going through this is because then I'm going to come to the script itself. And I'll show you the word for word scripting that has proven to be effective over many, many years, <clears throat> but it's important to understand why different things are important. So let's go through these keys. They're good, they're good for all calls, not just the one that I'm gonna go through here today. They're principles that change the way that we use the telephone, okay? So let's start with the first one. There we go. So what is, I kind of already talked about it, and that is you need one script for all internet leads. Okay, now the best practice here is to have the same person making and taking all these calls. You can have other people trained as backup, but if you have one person whose job it is, and that's solely what they're on, and they've got the, the task of getting a hold of people right away and calling often to get a hold of them, and they are measured based on their performance in that position, then it, it makes all the difference in the world. Now, obviously, you need people trained in, in backup. Um, some people say, well, what if I don't have enough leads to occupy one person completely? Well, you can certainly have them doing some other things, but they need to be able to make those calls when they come in, right? It's critical. So if you need to change the number of leads you have coming on, then you can certainly buy more leads. Uh, you can get with us and 
talk about getting more. You can increase your own web marketing and get more in that, that way. I've also seen um, agencies that have, that have gotten together and, and together hired one person to handle leads for both agencies, that kind of thing. So there's many ways to skin that cap, but it's very, very important to get one consistent process. And if it's a couple people, that's fine. Just make sure they're using the same script when they call. Now, second thing here is that you need to know and understand the sales process and measure the right results. Uh, again, this is a huge pet peeve of mine. And uh, far too often when I walk into agencies and I start working with them, the biggest thing I find is that they're trying to do everything on one call and it does several things. Number one is when you're trying to close sales all on the first call or you're trying to demand too much, we've got to get you know, complete qualified and a whole deal set up and you know, the credit card collected and all this kind of stuff. Uh, again, it creates tremendous pressure, anxiety, call reluctance, because there's a lot to get done there. And what if I don't get it all done? It's, it makes it for a much tougher sale. And it ignores the actual sales process that is a best practice. So again, go, there we go. So there's a proven sale, whoops, let me go back here. Again, finicky, there we go. So there's a proven sales system that, uh, again, I didn't invent. It's been in the industry for a long time. People have tried to go away from it at times. Uh, you may think you've got a better mousetrap, and maybe you do. But what I've found is the best practice over and over again is that we have a, a, a very simple step-by-step -step process. And that is that leads come in, they get entered in our contact management system, or CRM. Right? If you don't have one, that's step number one is to get one. And then you're going to call those leads until they're reached, not just once, not just twice. We'll talk about that another time is you need a good call cadence in order to reach everybody. Once you do, you, that's where you roll out your script. You contact them with a proven script and the script is intended not to sell them, not to overqualify them, but to set an appointment. An appointment to do an in-person assessment or in today's world, maybe a virtual assessment until we can get back to in-person. But sales happen on, with boots on the ground in front of families. The bottom line is you've got to set that appointment. When you try to do too much over the phone, not only does it set up the person making the calls with a, a tough task and a, a lot of call reluctance, but it also ignores the fact that most people make decisions not over the phone. They like to see you. They like to, they like to get to know you. And the assessment process is critical. You need to get to know them and really plan out a good care plan for them. So an appointment is set, then that assessment is conducted, and thereafter, we design and sell a care plan. Right, doing that is a, it's a consultative sales approach. It's the best sales approach, not only for our industry, but for many. And it makes all the difference in the world if that's the approach that we're using. Now, in this, one of the things that we have to understand is that if that's our process, then we need to measure not the entire, pro, you know, one of the pet peeves I have is number one, people are trying to do everything over the phone right off the bat. They're saying, oh, this is a terrible lead because I couldn't, I couldn't close a 24 seven deal on the first call. <laughs> And, uh, and what they're finding is that when they do close deals, it's fewer hours, by the way. I can show you statistics over and over again, a lot fewer hours than when you meet with them in person to do an assessment. But even more, then your measurements get all screwed up. You don't know if your person on the phone is actually doing the best job or not. Whereas if you know the sales process, then you're measuring the step from, you're measuring the percentage from one step to another. So the key, the, the KPI here, the key measurement, right, is not how many sales we get in the end, the key measurement for this person making the calls is how many appointments they set. So I, I got 100 leads. How many assessment appointments did I set? That's the key measurement, right? And then we measure how many actually got conducted, and then we measure you know, how many sales, and then we measure billable hours. And if you do that, you'll find that the measurements add up quickly. You get a lot more out of doing it that process. But knowing what to measure makes all the difference in the world. It also relieves the burden. All I have to do is set an appointment. That's a lot easier call. I don't have to sell them. I don't have to answer every question. I've just got to be able to set an appointment. And if everything drives towards that, you're going to get more appointments. Okay? All right. The, the, last, the next thing is that you need to understand who you're calling and know their motivations. Again, we've talked about this in other trainings and other webinars. Internet leads are different from professional referral leads in that they, they have much more of a shopper's mentality at first. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go through all the details here, but your quintessential internet shopper is somebody who uh, is, is sort of that younger baby boomer, older Gen Xer these days. 
Uh, she's very intelligent. She's uh, very educated, almost a little cynical. Even if the doctor tells her to do something, she goes and Googles it first, right? And she's looking a lot online to educate herself. She wants to be informed. She wants to be educated. She wants somebody to be her advocate and her advisor. And she wants to work with people that treat her with that kind of respect. You're not calling to simply, you know, sign them up. I've been, <laughs> been into a lot of agencies where the call goes something like, you know, you know, uh, hi, here's our price. Here's what we do and don't do. When do you want to start? <laughs> I think, well, okay, I'm, I'm surprised you actually get deals out of that, right? because that's not who they are. They are shoppers and you need to provide that experience for them. So one of the things, and we'll talk about this as we get to the script, um, there's a lot of things that you can build as collateral that make all the difference in the world and you'll see how they play into, into our script. There's some really cool sales uh, techniques that you can use if you build up some collateral because it's this collateral that they're looking for anyways. So the assessment is certainly a big piece of the collateral but then articles, reports, web pages, things on uh, white papers, books that you can send out that inform and educate, audios, videos. Now, again, you, you can either produce these yourself, very easy, they don't have to be you know, professionally produced. Look at everything on YouTube today. Uh, often some of the best selling things are just right off somebody's desktop. But you can also go and get professionally produced videos just by linking to them, right? Finding stuff that's really well done and simply sharing those. Checklists, comparisons, Right, things that you do in your, about your community and all the resources and things like that. I, I know one uh, very, very successful agency that one of their primary things is they send out a, a, a checklist in comparison to all the senior services in the area. I mean, it's phenomenal. It, it's a great, great tool for people. Um, personal introductions, right? The fact that you know everybody and can introduce people, support groups, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of things that you can develop. And if you come at it from a consultative sales approach, knowing that this is a uh, generally a highly uh, sophisticated, highly educated shopper, and you're gonna help them to shop. That's a big distinction between trying to close every sale. Now, next, uh, next point here. There we go. Is you wanna control every call with questions. Um, here's the, the fine balance. The top salespeople on, on the phone, telemarketers, they are in complete control. They manage the call. They, they drive the conversation. They completely control the conversation, but they're not talking much. In fact, they're spending most of their time listening because they've asked questions. And the key is you want to uh, talk until you ask, directing their focus, you know, find, you know, making sure that they're answering in a certain way. And then you talk until you ask another question. Everything that you do, you don't pause in between questions. One of the, one of the problems that people have in a lot of scripts is they have Undirected pauses is what I call them, meaning that they'll say, you know, hi, my name is Peter and I'm with ABC Home Care, and then they'll stop. And, and that pause is an invitation to talk, and they get that's where they, they lose the call. It gets derailed because if people have a pause, it feels awkward, they want to fill it, they start talking. So you don't want to pause until you've asked a question. Major thing is we go through the script, you'll see that every pause has a question that directs that pause. You also don't want any unintended questions, and that happens when the voice qualities aren't right. right? In, in every language, you trail up in voice qualities if it's a question. You, you stay the, straight across if it's a statement, and commands go down. So if I say, um, you love me, it's just a statement. If I say, you love me, right? I trailed up, now it's a question and it begs the, an answer. So what often happens is people will get into a script and they'll do things like, you know, I'm calling from XYZ Senior Care uh, because uh, you're looking for care for your mother. And even though they didn't necessarily intend it, the, the, the script wasn't a question right there, they suddenly asked a question. And maybe that's not the best question to ask at times, right? Maybe we wanna direct the question a different way. And in fact, that's what we do wanna do in the script. So beware of unintended questions, beware of undirected pauses, control the conversation with questions. That doesn't mean you're talking a lot. In fact, you should be talking little, but listening a lot, and yet you're in complete control of it. The next tip, uh, next key principle is be like a great doctor in that doctors diagnose and prescribe, right? So one of the interesting things is that if you went to your doctor, think about it, think about this analogy. If you went to your doctor, and the doctor sat you down and said, okay, uh, before we begin, I need to tell you all about me. Uh, let me show you my uh, GPA in undergrad. 
and then let me show you my GPA in college. Let me trot out all of my uh, diplomas and credentials and all my certifications. Now let me tell you about the years of history that I've had here and there. And now let me give you a logical breakdown of why I'm the best doctor in town. And they proceeded to do what, what amounts to a, a normal sales presentation, right? What would you do? In my world, I think I'd run the other way, right? It's not what I expect out of a medical professional, out of somebody who I'm going to to consult with and to get the kind of advice that I expect an expert to give. That's not what experts do. And if that's not what experts do, especially in the medical field, we're in somewhat of that same category. Why would we do that? Why would we get on the phone and give a whole dog and pony show presentation about what we do? That's not how people determine expertise. So think about how you determine whether a doctor is an expert you want to work with or not. And the way you determine that is through several key things. First of all, expertise in our minds is determined by whether or not people ask the right questions. A couple of years ago, I, I was having a knee issue. I twisted my knee. So I went to see a, a guy that I had not seen before. I had asked for recommendations. Some friends said, go see this guy. So I went to see him, but I didn't know him from Adam. And I went in to see him and right away I'm thinking, well, I, you know, I don't know. We'll see if this guy can help. He didn't go through, a, again, a big presentation about himself. In fact, he didn't say anything about himself. I didn't know anything about his past or his background, but I knew quickly that he was an expert because he sat down in front of me, started taking a look at my knee, but then he started asking questions that I knew that only somebody that knows what they're doing would ask. He asked me about specific areas where it hurts. He asked me about specific motions. He asked me about whether it hurt down here in the calf and up here on the thigh, and does my hip hurt this way? And he had me do certain, you know, stances and stretches and tell me where, you know, and he, he really um, fine tooth comb went through everything in questioning and asking. And I knew before, before I, he was even done with that discovery that this guy knows what he's talking about. Even though he hadn't told me anything to do yet, he hadn't recommended anything. But by the questions he was asking, I knew. And that's how we determine expertise. The, the, the diagnosis is a major part of the assumption of expertise. And then he went on to give very clear, effective prescriptions, right? Di doctors diagnose and then they prescribe. And based on that, we determine, oh, they know what they're talking about. Now, the other smaller thing is that they speak the right language, right? If I use a medical term and my doctor's eyes glaze over because he doesn't know what I'm talking about, that might be a problem for me, right? So you need to speak the right language, have all the right terminology, but that comes out as you're asking the questions. And then, obviously, reputation matters. Today's not the, the place where we're going to talk about this, but your reviews online matter a lot these days. That's where you build your reputation, not by giving a whole oral history of yourself. And then finally, throughout the process, I want, especially these days, uh, despite the stereotype that you see on, on TV these days of the, you know, the doctor that is, acts like God and commands from above and, you know, my will be done, that kind of thing, that's not what people are actually looking for. They want somebody that educates them throughout the process. They're looking for information. We live, you know, we've, it's been called the information age. And the information age means a lot of things. But one of the things that you can take and should take it to mean is that if I want to be seen as an expert, I need to give people education. I need to give them information, right? Think about it that way. The more I teach, the more I educate. And it doesn't have to be some, you know, unheard of thing you know more than 99% of the people out there about senior care, just because you're in the business, just giving them the basics about how to do this or how to do that, or how to find a good caregiver or how, you know, what things to do to protect the home and, you know, for further falls and accidents and things like that. You know so much that people don't know. And by sharing that through a variety of means, suddenly you're the expert, right? So work on that. Think about being a good doctor, right? Recommend steps to take. You don't, you don't need an appointment, but they do. And here's what I mean by that. Um, you should never have this air about you of an urgency that you need a sale, right? People will run the other way if they think you're selling them because you need a sale, right? You desperately need them to say yes to an assessment. But you need an urgency that comes from the fact that they need the assessment. They need to do this now. In other words, doctors don't put off the air. Good doctors don't, don't put out there that, oh, I have to work with them because they need another client. But they do put out the urgency that I need this, and therefore they're going to push. They're going to make this work. Okay? All right, real quickly here, we'll get to the script. Uh, next couple of things, use consultative language. That's part of it, right? Uh, we, we like to be very certain in sales. 
right? But in this case, it's a consultative sale. So until we diagnose, we need to talk about, I may, I could be able to, I might, I possibly. During the assessment, we'll determine if we can help you. If not, we'll give you the resources needed. In other words, it sets you apart as being honest if you're just, if you're not promising things. And then finally, get micro agreements throughout the call. Make sure that you're getting lots of yeses, lots of small agreements. We'll talk about that more as we look at the script. Here's a big, big thing. It goes back to some of that information that I talked about, some of that collateral. Give them something before asking for a commitment. You'll see that play out in the script. It makes a huge, huge difference. You want to induce what's called the law of reciprocation. We all know about this, right? The law of reciprocation is a psychological law that we all have deep within us. And it says that when I receive something, when I get a gift, I feel indebted. And I feel like I owe you something, even though it's not stated, nobody's saying I have to, but I feel like I, I need to give something back, right? So throughout, you want to start things off before you ask for something, before you recommend, you want to say, well, here's what I'm going to do for you. And you want to give them a gift. Well, you'll see that in the script in just a moment. And then good assumptive closing techniques. When it's an appointment, you always want to use what's called an alternate choice close, meaning two, uh, two possible dates and times, right? Narrow it down. Do you want Wednesday or Thursday? morning or afternoon, three or four o'clock, right? Don't ever say, well, so do you think you want to meet? <laughs> Give them an alternate choice in which both choices is good. Both choices means they're doing it. And then finally, back to my pet peeve, never prejudge. Do not overqualify on the phone. Again, oh man, I can't tell you the number of arguments that I've had over this with people. There seems to be this issue, and if, if I'm pointing you out, I'm sorry, but there seems to be this issue where people uh, are, they have this, this thing on this chip on their shoulder. I'm not going to meet with anybody unless they're absolutely ready to sign up. <laughs> I think, oh my goodness, you're losing out. So out of 10 potential clients, if you set an assessment and you go meet with everybody, right? You get 10 of them to meet with you. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe three or four, they aren't right. You don't get the deal, but you still got six or seven good clients. But then I see people and they say, oh, I'm not going to meet with them unless they're absolutely perfectly qualified. So I'm going to do everything on the phone first. Well, then what happens is out of those 10, they narrow it down to two, two or three. They think, well, I'm, these are slam dunks that I will only meet with them. Oddly enough, <laughs> whenever they do that, they don't have a hundred percent close rate on those appointments, which befuddles me, you know, and yet, but even if they're close to it, okay, great. They got three good clients, but they missed out on three or four more they could have had by simply being more willing. Plus, by doing more assessments, you get better at it, your people get better at it, whoever's doing them, right? And you start measuring them based on their close rate and assessments and all that kind of stuff. So don't overqualify. Assume every person will be great. Set appointments with everybody, right? It's better to set lots of, uh, of assessments and close and not close a few than it is to only do a couple of assessments that are guaranteed to convert. Which, by the way, like I said, for some reason, it's not always 100% for even those people. All right, <laughs> so those are the tips and skills Let's talk about the call components for a great call in this scenario. Now I talk, uh, whenever I, I build a script, um, and this is one that I've built many, many years ago, we've used over and over again, it's very well proven. Um, whenever we talk call components here, I, I break scripts into these modules because if we learn the components and the sequence of them, then if you get off track, right? If somebody asks a question, it's not on script, right? Uh, you can easily get back because you know where you were, which components have I always, are already completed. So in this case, there are six components to this call. These six components, you need to work your way through. And again, if you get pulled off track, you know where to go back to. So we have a welcome and introduction. Again, all of these are very quick. I'm talking 30 seconds, a minute at most. But we have a welcome and introduction until you get that all out. If you get derailed, you have to come back to that, right? Uh, once you've completed that, then you're into the discovery. And again, we need to complete the discovery before we move on. If we get derailed, we, we're right back in there until we've done. Then we do what's called a tell back. Then we're going to recommend, right? This is our prescription. We diagnose and then we prescribe. These are steps that we're going to lay out for them, including gifts that we give them and the assessment that they need to do. And it's at that point that we're going to set the appointment for the assessment. And then finally, before we get off the phone, we set the stage for the assessment. And we'll talk about, again, scripting for each one of these. So let's talk about the welcome and introduction first, okay? It's very straightforward, but very, very important. And again, use the principles. This is one long, you don't wanna pause, no undirected pauses, no unintended questions. You wanna state everything until you get to the final question, which then is the transition into your discovery. 
So you say, is this John? And they say, yes. You say, well, hi, John. My name is Pete Peter with XYZ Home Care. You and I have not met, but a family advisor at caring.com asked me to give you a call because you're looking for senior care options for your mother, apparently. And she, and she, meaning the family advisor, thought I might be able to help you. You see, I specialize in seniors and helping seniors and families here in your area, in our area. And I'd love to see if I can help you. Can you tell me more about what's prompted your search for care options? Now, again, it's a short way of introducing yourself. You've introduced your name, your company's name, speak clearly, make sure they've heard it. Uh, you've also been very candid about the fact that you don't know them. You're not trying to play games about, you know, about them knowing you or that they should know you or anything like that. It's just, we don't know each other, but I've been asked to call you and reference the person that they've already spoken with. If the lead has come from us, we've already had a 15 to 30 minute call with them where we went through a whole lot of discovery. We built a lot of trust. So, so reference the person. You can reference the family advisor's name directly. It's on the lead that comes to you, right? And then say, you know, I'm calling because they thought that I could help you with your mother's care. You see, I specialize in this area. Make sure they understand that you are local. That makes a big, big difference. I've found that over and over again, if that's included in the welcome, it, it endears you a whole lot more. And then finally, without pausing, without any undirected pauses, you want to get to that final question. Can you tell me more about what's prompted your search for care options? Now, again, we've already given you some details that they gave us, but you want to open this up to where they're talking to you about it. Tell me more about what's prompted the search for care. So that's your welcome. What you want to do is you want to practice that over and over again, role play it, drill it, make sure that every call you're able to get through the welcome and get to that final question without it being derailed, without, without losing the call. Next thing is, The next thing again in our, in our process here, there we go, is we're gonna get to the discovery. So we do the welcome and introduction. Once we've gotten to that question about what's prompted the call, we're right into discovery. Now, this is the least scripted, although you should have in front of you a list of questions that you can ask. The goal here is that you wanna ask three to four questions and you're looking for what's called the main motivation, the primary driver, the hot button, whatever it is you wanna call it, but it's the, it's the primary emotional driver here. And so you wanna ask enough questions to get there. Some people are very effusive. They'll just, you know, they'll just throw it right out there. They'll cry right away. They'll do whatever, right? You know exactly what they're all about in the first question. But most people, it takes a few open-ended questions to get them to open up and talk about their situation. And you can certainly reference the information that we give you if you're buying the lead from us, right? It's coming from caring. Um, you can reference some of that information, but you wanna also ask follow-up questions to dig deeper. So again, a list of questions to have in front of you as you're doing this, just to lead you to the next question if needed, is again, it starts with that first question, what prompted your first search for senior care options? But you can ask things like, what are your main concerns? You know, the family advisor at Caring told me about your concerns with blank, right? With your mom's fall. Tell me more about that, right? Hear it from them. What activities are not getting done well? What's not perfect about the current situation? What's changed recently? If they say anything that needs more, further explanation, you can say, well, when you say blank, what do you mean by that? What scares you about that is a great question as you're going through. In your opinion, what kind of assistance is needed? Now, how would you like it to be? And finally, what's most important to you in all this? What has to happen for you to feel that, right? Get their definition of what they're looking for. Again, three to four questions just to get them to open up. You wanna to get to what's called that main motivation the emotional drivers. Once you do a discovery, once you feel like you're there, then you're gonna do what's called a tailback. And the tailback is the most important part of this whole process if you wanna take control and ultimately wind up with a great assessment, great client. Now, it's the, it's the most often skipped because as we do a good discovery, we get really excited and then people wanna suddenly jump in and start telling all about, oh, well, let me tell you what we can do for you. Right? And they skip over the tailback. And yet the tailback, and when, when I describe it, again, think about your best doctor, right? Doctors are marvelous at doing a good tailback because here's all a tailback is. A tailback is you're going to summarize what they've just told you, including their main motivation, and then you're going to make sure that you've covered everything, right? So you're going to use words like, so it sounds like, and then you're going to describe what they've told you. Or what I'm hearing you say is blank. Or to make sure we're on the same page or the biggest concerns I'm hearing from you are blank, right? 
So it's a quick summary, one or two sentence summary of everything that they've told you. And then you're gonna say, does that sound about right? And is there anything I've missed? Now again, think about your doctor. Doctor goes in, my knee's hurting doc. Great, all these great questions probing around. And then the doc, so great discovery, great diagnosis. And then the doctor says, so it sounds like you're having this issue and this issue and it's, it's affecting your ability to do this. And we need to get this done because you really want to get back to playing this sport. Is that correct? Did I miss anything? And it's at that moment where I mentally give the doctor all of the, the control, all of the uh, expertise, right? It's where I hand over everything to the doctor. By saying yes, I say, oh, I mean, I'm putty in your hands at this point. Tell me what to do, right? Because they've now heard me. This is so huge. And yet, again, a lot of people skip this step and it's, and it's a major part of any script. Now, once we do a good tellback, now we're gonna get into the recommendation and here's where a very specific pattern matters, right? This pattern is huge, so please follow the pattern. So the pattern is you wanna start by affirming that you think you can help. Again, until we've done the assessment, we wanna be somewhat consultative. So you wanna say, I definitely think that we can help you. And then you want, to, you want to say, here's what I recommend. I recommend that you take several steps right away. So steps matter, right? It helps if people have steps to take, if they can see a process through this. So affirm that you can help them and then tell them that you have steps for them to take. Now, the first step should be this gift that I was talking about, right? You want to give them something. It completely changes the complexity and opens this up, up, up the law of reciprocation. It gets them going. You want to say, so the first thing is I'm going to send you a blank, right? Could be a video, an audio, a report, right? An invitation to a webinar, a seminar, right? I'm going to send you a video that I want you to watch. It'll do blank for you, right? It'll show you how to set up the home so that your mother does not fall again. So for instance, so the first thing I'm going to send you is a video that I want you to watch because it'll show you how to fall proof your home to, so, so that she's not falling again. Now, don't make any decisions about her care until you've watched this video, because it'll give you some ideas that I want you to use. So let me verify your email address. I have blank. Is that the best one, or is there a better email? So now pay attention to what we're doing. Step number one, these are steps, so there's several, right? That's been implied. Step number one is we're going to give them something. Again, this could be a video you produced, an audio you produced, a report that you wrote, or it could be something off the internet, a great article, a great video you found. I'm gonna send you this link. I want you to watch this because it will do this, this, and this for you. Don't make any decisions until you've done this. And let me verify your email. So now we're getting those micro agreements. We're getting them to reciprocate with some commitments, small commitments by giving you the best email. Often, by the way, when internet uh, leads are produced, people put in an email that is their spam email, right? The one that they want all the spam going to. Now they might give you the best email for them. It might be the same one. Then we're going to go on to the next steps. And by the way, the next step in, in these kinds of calls should be the assessment. You've just given them something, so there's some reciprocation. Now you say, next, I'm going to have our care coordinator stop by to assess your situation. She's been working in senior care for blank years, is well known in the community, and can offer a lot of good alternatives. She'll meet with you and your family, ask a lot of questions, and do a great assessment so that we can give you solutions and develop a care plan. If we think we can help you carry out that care plan, she'll discuss what we can do for you at that time. If we can't help you, she'll re recommend options for you and even introduce you to the best providers in town. So again, we talk about the assessment. It's a gift again to them. It's, a re it's something that they should do. Uh, it's not a sales pitch. If we can't help you, we'll tell you. And a small bit of, of support for who's doing it. If it's you doing it, again, Tell them about the reasons why they want to meet with you. If you have a care coordinator or somebody that's gonna be doing it, make sure that they're all set up, you know, that people understand that it's somebody valuable to meet with. Okay. Now, once we do the recommendation, the next step is we wanna set the appointment. So very quick and simple steps, again, using good sales psychology. You wanna start with, again, a subtle commitment, easy question answer. Where does your mother live? What's the address? Most internet leads, whether they come on your website or through us, most of them we don't, we don't ask for an address, right? We have an email address, we have phone numbers, we have names, we get all that information. Uh, we certainly have zip codes that they're located in so that we can match them up with you and the zip codes that you service, but we don't have their specific address, so you wanna get that, right? 
it looks like our coordinator will be in your area this Wednesday and Thursday. Which day will work for you, work best for you to have her stop by for an hour to conduct the assessment? Wednesday or Thursday, give an alternate choice. Morning, afternoon, or evening, or if it's just afternoon, evening, or morning, afternoon. And then finally, whittle it down. I have 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. available, which would be best. Whittle it down through alternate choices to get the appointment. Again, the primary focus is to set the appointment. Don't do anything until you've set the appointment. That's all we're after. All we're after is this appointment. And then finally, the last step is to set the stage for that appointment. So we're gonna do several things there. We don't just hang up the phone once we have a date and time. Uh, the first thing in setting the stage is we wanna recap the main motivation and the commitments. We say, so to recap, we really need to make sure that your mother has blank and no longer has to worry about blank. In other words, you're restating the main motivation. What is, what's the real reason we're doing this? Well, again, as I told you, I think we can help you. So I'm gonna start by emailing you this. So look for that in your email. I want you to watch it, listen to it, read it, whatever it is, and then call me if you have any questions or ideas from it. Then on Wednesday at 3 p.m., right, Nancy will be at your mother's home to meet you and her and assess the situation. From that, she'll be able to give you a complete care plan and the resources to get it done. Now, from there, you want to further set up the assessment for success, and it starts with decision makers. Now notice I didn't do this ahead of time. A lot of people get lost by trying to make sure that all the decision makers are there before we can even set a date and time. Trust me, you'll lose more appointments that way than you'll gain. It's better to set the appointment and then get the decision makers there than it is the other way around. So after we've set the appointment, we wanna say, so who else should be at the meeting? What other family members are involved in this decision? Right? What needs to be done to invite them? And then finally, prepare them for tackling the finances this doesn't mean that you overqualify on finances. It doesn't mean that you get a complete budget over the phone, right? But you get them thinking that way. And you say, now, one of the things that blank will help you with, the person coming, one of the things that Nancy will help you with on Wednesday includes all of the options for paying for your mother's care. The family advisor at Caring told me that you have a budget of around $2,000. Is that where we're starting? Or does your family have other resources that can be used? Again, just opening it up. Whatever they say doesn't matter much. Now, if they, if in fact they tell you that, oh, well, we're, you know, we're on Medicaid, we're gonna build Medicaid. If that's the case, then obviously if it came from us, that's not a good lead, we made a mistake. We've always screened those leads out, but, it, but once in a while we're human, it slips through. If that's the case, then you can obviously move forward to cancel the appointment, uh, unless you happen to do Medicaid work. Uh, but in most cases, you just wanna let it be. If they say, no, that's what we've got, or well, my brother might have some more, or you know, we're looking at ways of leveraging the house or things like that. All you need to know is a few details that you're going to, that therefore, you know, warn and, and prepare your, your care coordinator to be able to go talk about, it, right? Talk about reverse mortgages, talk about VA benefits, talk about whatever else we can get. Okay? So those are all talking points. And all it is is to open up their mind to the fact that we are going to talk finances here. So again, the script is very straightforward. Just the components you want to roll through and you want to memorize and get practice on each one of those components. You want to role play that until it's really solid. Final thing here, we're running out of time. I apologize, we're, we've gone a little long. I've been a little bit verbose here. But um, throughout this process, you need to learn to handle brush offs and objections. I wasn't planning on spending a whole lot of time on this. We could do a whole nother training module just on this. Uh, we do have a training module in our course that we'll be posting on this. And so I highly recommend that you get to it. But you want to be able to handle each one of the most common brush offs and script them as well. Some of the most common ones are, you know, I don't have time right now. Uh, you can also script things for, you know, people that say, well, I'm exploring all the options, right? Or again, there's subtle brush offs, uh, people that divert uh, attention by saying, well, what are your prices? Tell me what the prices are. I want to compare them right now. Um, or questions about caregivers, right? Can you give me this type of caregiver? So again, there's great, uh, great scripting for each type. Uh, typically, what you want to do is redirect it without, without a, you know, you don't have to combat the objection. If somebody says, I don't have time right now. You just say, that's what I figured, which is why I was calling to verify some information and send you this video that you need to review before you make any decisions about your mom's care. Is blank the best email address? Again, you've already done the welcome. Uh, they interjected here. I don't have time right now. Great. Just let me get the email address verified. And by the way, the family advisor told me that your mom is struggling with blank. Is that the primary reason you're looking for care? You wanna see if you can open up the discovery and frankly, uh, nine times out of 10, if you handle it this way, they get right into telling you about mom's care and 20 minutes later, you've got an appointment. Right? 
the time that they didn't have certainly turned into a great call. Same thing with all the others. You, you, you don't necessarily want to combat it, but you want to go with it. Prices, I never quote prices over the phone, right? We, we talk about ranges of prices, and then I tell them, look, that's why we do the assessment, is because there's all sorts of ranges. We may not even be the best one for you, but we'll help you to get the best prices that are possible for the type of care that your mom needs. Uh, and let's go back to the assessment. So lots of stuff on handling brush offs and objections. You should have scripts for each one of those. So finally, my final deal is, is I'll redirect you to our training course. Uh, again, we announced this last month. Uh, we're in the process of posting all these training modules for our enhanced partners, the people that have an enhanced listing in our directory. Uh, on our partners.caring.com site, we've built a 10 module course. Uh, the first couple are posted. There's a couple more that we're posting uh, today or tomorrow morning. And we've got all the rest uh, in various processes almost in the can. We'll get those posted within the next week or two. Um, they're each five to 15 minutes long. Your whole staff should go through them. And again, make sure you get a hold of your account executive for the password to get in there. If you're not currently one of our enhanced partners, get with one of our account executives and become so. All right, with that, let's, uh, let's turn it to Q&A. Uh, just quick summary, key takeaways. For heaven's sakes, don't wing it. Scripts are absolutely vital, right? You close more business, you're in control, right? Go through the principles that I talked about, the script components. Again, remember there's a process, the welcome, the discovery, the tellback, recommendation, set the appointment and set the stage. And finally, uh, for more best practices, go to the course. All right, what questions do we have, Denise? Denise, you there? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, can hear you. Perfect. Now. Sorry. Um, no the problem. number one question we always get and we got again is, will this recording and slides be available afterward? And the answer is yes. We will make this available. We will send it to everyone via email after the session. Okay. And then also we had a question about um well one of the very another first question you got was about prices that they're right. often shopping around and what right. to do in those instances i think you covered it but if you want to just quickly summarize again for that one so again I, i'm always upfront about price ranges but i'm also upfront about the fact that we don't uh, quote an exact price because it's dependent on what kind of care uh, again i'm very I, I tell people up front we may not even be the right place and if we're not i'll i'll tell you that we're not but our, our prices are from this range to that range dependent on what we find in the assessment. So what's a good time to do the assessment? I drive it all back to the assessment. So quote price ranges, but then uh, offer the gift, offer the assessment, and uh, move forward that direction. Great. And then we had two questions that were similar to each other. One was, what if the prospect asks you to tell them about what your agency can offer versus uh, and what makes you stand out from others? And then the second one uh, said that you mentioned that some agencies send comparison. What does that mean? Do they send out lists and prices of other agencies in the area? So um, essentially, you're getting asked here about, do yeah. you tell them about your agency and how you compare to others? Okay. So the biggest thing is I don't want myself or you know somebody on my staff uh, getting deep in the weeds on this on this first call. Okay? Um, because that what, what separates me or should separate me as this is up to you but what what I feel separates me is the care that I place in this diagnosis and prescriptive process right until I have a diagnosis what makes me different well you know I could I could tout a list here other people can tout the you know similar lists and then we get into tit for tat about who has the best insurance policy I mean, it's, you know that, that's not where we want to go this is about them it's not about what I offer so the bottom line is, um, you know, if somebody says, well, what makes you different? I usually come back with the main thing that makes us different is that we customize everything for our clients. And I know a lot of people say that, but we truly do, which is why we don't do anything until we start with this assessment. And I go right back to setting the assessment. Um, I will also tell them often, you know, I'll, set, I'll send you a link that lists all of the credentials that we have and a whole lot of testimonials and reviews. This is why online reviews matter. Uh, but again, this is not the place to go into a big long presentation about it. Drive everything back to this 
assessment. If you can get in the home or a virtual assessment, uh, that makes all the difference in the world. You just wind up, you know, all you wind up doing is setting yourself up for, you know, again, this, this tip for tap. And then as far as other agencies sending out comparisons, um, I have seen one or two agencies that uh, do some price shopping and put that on their comparisons, but most of them uh, are primarily looking at all of the options in the industry, not necessarily their competitors. So they're looking at the difference between an assisted living community versus home care, assisted living at home. They're looking at, you know, this type of facility versus home care. They're looking at doing a care home. They're looking at, you know, versus home care. So they're looking at all those different uh, uh, things, which is what a lot of people are looking at. A lot of people are looking at the different options because they don't understand them. Again, you know more than 99% of the population just because you're in the industry. They don't. Uh, the number one question we get when people first talk to our, care, our family advisors is they say, some, they say things like, well, I think my mom needs a nursing home. And then we start talking to them. Turns out they don't need nursing care at all. They don't need a nursing home, um, you know, but they didn't know what else to call it. They, they have no idea. So that's the kind of comparison that most people are doing. Once in a while, I, I have seen some that have been fairly bold in, in doing a price comparison. And you see that in the world of marketing all the time, right? Insurance companies and car dealers and all, you know, grocery stores, right? <laughs> doing their, their comparisons. And it's not a bad thing to do, but I would not make that the subject of this call or any call. That becomes a collateral piece that you're willing to share with people as they make commitments to move forward in the process. Thank you, Peter. Um, four different people asked about our current situation with the COVID-19 pandemic yeah. and how that changes the assessment process. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, you know what, this is an interesting time. Uh, last month we did a webinar, I addressed this a little bit. Um, you know, I tend to be the eternal optimist, so I look for silver linings. I'm not going to sugarcoat the fact that this has been a rough time for everybody involved. Um, you know, again, not to, not to be belittling of anything. You know, I'm even, my hair is too long right now. <laughs> so I, it's a rough time for all of us. Um, and it has impacted our industry definitely. All of you have probably lost some clients because families are at home taking care of them or because they're scared and they don't want caregivers coming over. Some of you even, even had caregivers. But, but this too shall pass, and it is starting to pass, as you've seen. Uh, some states are already starting to open up a little bit. We have seen, uh, here's how it affected us directly, is we saw a, a significant drop in inquiries online uh, starting about six weeks ago. And that drop went down, and just like you've seen the COVID graph spike, well, we went down with those spikes, and it has started coming back up. So, you know, we're, we're all in this together. We've seen less inquiries. We've seen, uh, but the inquiries, interestingly enough, when we do get those inquiries, they have been much more serious. The conversion rates have been much higher. Um, they've always been good, but much higher. Uh, on our side, many more of the people that fill out forms and call us qualify, meaning that we've, we've gone through, asked all the questions, they are qualifying. There's some desperate need out there. And if you can be the person that is uh, handling that, and then also right now, we're starting on the upswing. This is where you need to get all your systems. I guess the silver lining of this is that it, it, it's a good time to sort of back up and get these systems in place, get the training with our staff we need, get ourselves participating in a way that works, get our scripts honed, and you know, get things like our listings on caring.com set up and our lead flow set up properly. And we have some major announcements coming up, by the way, some acquisitions and things like that that we're gonna be announcing. Uh, we plan on coming out of this this with a huge role and we're starting to see that already so I, again I don't mean to minimize it we've all been impacted but it's we're, we're on the upswing and things are really looking good for the next couple months thank you Peter um, and thank you everyone for the questions we're nearly out of time if we didn't get to your question we will follow up with you afterward we definitely want to make sure everyone feels that they got their questions answered and, and we appreciate you spending time today with us and thank you Peter for all the great information you shared here is how folks can reach us after the session both by phone or email uh, Peter also mentioned our partner blog that has the library of past webinars uh, and as well as up 
upcoming webinars if you want to sign if you loved it so much you want to sign up for the next one as well as the training series series he mentioned so check that out partners.caring.com um, and we really hope you found this information helpful we want your feedback uh, after the session you're going to be prompted for a quick survey uh, please don't be shy definitely tell us what you loved about it what you suggest for the future uh, we look forward to hearing you uh, hearing from you uh, Peter did you have any final things you wanted to say before I close the session just thank you very much again I love this industry I love you the fact that you're in this industry whether you're an agency owner or manager or employee of an agency that I mean it's such a wonderful you know business to be in we serve seniors in the best way possible and I just thank you for your attendance and anything I can do to help you, please let us know. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.